Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another little session about Stalo and uh, what we can do with the, the built-in functionality. Today we're going to look at emails. So this is various different types of email that we can produce from Fiori apps using Stalo and indeed our email product flow. Uh, and so there are a few different types of email that we might want to uh, consider. Uh, the first one is process notifications uh, and these are the emails that are triggered when uh, some information is submitted via an app and, uh, and the work item moves from one person to another in the organisation. This is basically to tell somebody that they've got some work to do. Um, Another kind of email is that if we want to trigger a reminder and so it might be that they didn't, they've had the notification, they've not taken any action and, uh, and now it's time for them to, uh, for, for us to send them a little uh, reminder, a little poke, say come on then, you've not done anything, three days have passed, it's really time for you to, uh, to jump into action. Another kind of email is posting notifications. So these are rather like process notifications, but they would hand it, happen um, either at the end of the process, often at the end of the process. This is basically to tell somebody that something has happened. So somebody has taken an action, or we've created a document inside SAP, or something has happened. There's no work item with them. They're not supposed to do anything. It's just to inform uh, somebody along the way. So that might happen earlier on in the process, later on in the process. It might go to a whole bunch of different people. It might have attachments. We call that a posting notification because something has happened uh, first to trigger it. And, uh, and then the final one uh, is posting alerts. Uh, this is really when uh, an update has failed and we want to tell an administrator to go check the problem out and fix it. Uh, and so that's another type of email that Stalo can trigger. I can't uh, cover all four today, so I'm going to focus on process notifications and, uh, and we'll go through the setup steps for, uh, for a process notification uh, using Stalo. Okay, so we're going to have a look at uh, a Progressive Guidance uh, app that we've uh, built already. I'm going to go to the SAP backend and we'll have a quick look at uh, this. So let's start off by looking at the data schema for this particular app. So we look at that in our forms uh, setup uh, area. I'm going to um, go and take a look at the configuration just to remind ourselves of the kind of information that we're going to be collecting in this particular Fiori app. And here we go, this is the one I'm interested in. I'll open up the data view and we'll see that there are various sections of this app. I'm going to navigate to the form fields area and so we can see things like the, uh, the name, the uh, incident date here, um, the org ID, etc, etc. So these are the fields that are available to me. We, uh, we're collecting them through the Fiori app and they'll be available for me to use within the body of the email. So we come back to these uh, these fields later on. So when it comes to generating the different types of email, the first thing I need to decide is, is this going to be a, uh, uh, an email that uh, we store using standard text, basically, um, which can be typically quite plain, but it can have HTML content. Or is this going to be triggered via flow or email generator and therefore have a lot more uh, rich content? And we do that in this option, maintain email format. So again, I navigate to my document type, which basically is the, my process definition. I'll navigate to the email format area here. And you can see they've got various different types of email here. Uh, the one I'm interested in here is notifications, and I've set this up to go be flow rather than FLM. That means that I'm going to be passing on control of uh, creating and sending the email uh, using flow. Uh, so that's the first uh, configuration. 
option to fill in. And then we need to tell the system what type of email to trigger and when. So we know that process notifications in general will be handled by flow, but, uh, but what email type and when in the process. So for that I use the form routing configuration option. Again I'll navigate to my document type. And so now we see the uh, uh, table formats this particular process. So we can see it uh, goes from an initial status to a submitted one, and from submitted it could be reviewed, from, re from reviewed it can be completed or indeed withdrawn. So it's a very simple um, three step process here. Uh, when I'm submitted or when I, uh, I push on to be reviewed, I'd like to trigger a notification. And so I've got this option to send a notification email and then I can choose my email type um, from a list. And so this is JB07 email type and a communication language um, which could be over, overridden later on based on the uh, particular recipient. Um, but at this point we're saying, okay, for uh, when this, uh, this app is submitted, then trigger me a, uh, a notification using email type. JB07. Okay, so as you might imagine, there's some configuration and some uh, definition of that email type, JB07. So let's go and take a look at that. And the easiest way is to look at this uh, at the HTML block graphical view. So we'll open that up and uh, I'll open up my JB07 email type, and I can see that I've got uh, a, a template wrapper that's to handle my hold my HTML blocks. Um, I've got a standard header and a footer in there, so I've got uh, a main section that's probably the the thing I'm most interested in. And uh, if I look at this uh, HTML content for the the main section of the email, it's uh, I can see it's just a table. Um, and uh, there's a uh, looks like a single row in there, and uh, it looks like a single uh, row cell, and then a paragraph uh, within that row cell with the styling that I would require. And so here I can see that uh, in bold I've got my uh, particular field um, name, and then the technical uh, field from the definition of the schema. So that's how we uh, define a, uh, some information to get from an app into uh, an email, it, just by referencing the same the field name, no other uh, coding uh, to, uh, to put in there. So a simple HTML uh, block for the main bit of that uh, email type. Okay, so um, uh, once I've set this email type up, I can uh, I can take a look at it. So let's have a look at the test uh, email trigger. So um, I just want to preview this uh, this email to see what's the kind of thing I expect to uh, send. So I do that through this app GUI here. Just make that a little bit bigger, here. and uh, and so we can see I've got a, a standard footer section here, a standard header section, and then the information we saw was this part here in the middle um, where we've got my field names and, uh, and the captions in bold. So that's a fairly simple uh, way and of course uh, you would reuse lots of these sections from one type of email to another so it becomes a very straightforward exercise to build the, the body of this email up. Okay so that's what it looks like without any uh, data um, pushed into it. So let's uh, let's now trigger a real one. And so I go to my Fiori launch pad and launch my app.
Uh, so let's uh, choose a filter that we know there is some information uh, in. Let's choose an employee that I know I've got some data for. And here comes the, the detail section of the app. And uh, I need to fill in some mandatory fields in order to trigger the, uh, the submission. So I'm just putting any old information in here and uh, see. So something went terribly wrong. Uh, there's another section I should fill in here. We will sort things out. Okay. That's all the mandatory fields uh, filled in, so I shall just simply submit this uh, this app. Back to the SAP system, that document is now saved um, in the database, all that, that information. And, uh, and so now the next stage will, it will push on to the next owner in, in the process and trigger uh, an email. Now by default, the recipient uh, is the email address from the SAP user that the app is rooted to. Um, and uh, we, we determined that in the logic for the, uh, for the routing. And of course, we can override this, uh, this particular logic to determine uh, a different uh, recipient. Uh, that uh, user is me, so it should have found my uh, email address. And here indeed is this, uh, is this email. I'm looking at it uh, in the Microsoft Outlook. And we can see that uh, the same email template is used. I've got this uh, data that I chose uh, in the app. Uh, some of it were drop-down lists. Some of it uh, was uh, it was free entry fields. Some of it was pre-populated. Um, but there was absolutely no uh, coding required. I didn't have to manipulate this data. It's just uh, taken the uh, all the human readable code as I uh, as I would expect given me a really uh, neat process uh, notification email. So that's how easy it is with Stalo to create process notifications. And of course, the other email types are further extensions of the same thing. Thank you very much.